This week, we get to cover a very exciting topic on the SAT, lines, angles, and triangles. Why are they exciting? Well, because the SAT tests them basically everywhere, and they're indirectly useful in a number of other applications. So we will begin with lines and angles, and then see how we can apply them in more advanced problems with triangles. Let's get started. First off, transverse lines. Here we see an example, a classic solve for x problem. So how do we end up relating these two seemingly unrelated angles? Well, that is with the magic of transverse lines. In class, you probably learned a lot of complicated things like vertical angle theorem or corresponding angle theorem, but go ahead and for the sake of not having to memorize all those names, throw those out the window and we're going to learn this in a much more intuitive and simple way. Every angle related through transverse lines is either same or different. If it's the same, then it's equal. If it's different, then it is supplementary. Whenever we have two lines intersecting like we have here, it makes these four angles A, B, C, and D. So we can relate these all as either same or different. Now just looking at it, we can see that A and C look roughly the same, so they are same, and therefore they are equal. A equals C, B equals D. Now the other angles, such as A and B, or A and D, all of these look different. And if we look closely, we realize that they form one side of a straight line, which we should know is 180 degrees. So using that knowledge, we can say that A plus D equals 180. This is what we call supplementary. So putting that together, we see that all of these other angles which look different, we categorize as different, which translates to supplementary. Now for the last layer, adding in a parallel line. So with these two lines now, instead of four angles, we have eight angles. But fortunately, they still follow the same rule, same or different. So let's look at some of our same angles. We have A equals C, A equals E. Uh, and these are all equal. Now comparing, we see, can also see our different angles. So for example, just looking at the diagram here, we have D and A look different, so those are supplementary. A plus B or A plus D equals 180. Another example, H and C, even though they're far apart, they might seem unrelated, they are different, therefore they have to be supplementary. Now let's go back to our original problem and relate these two angles using same versus different. So just looking at these angles, we see very clearly they don't look the same, they are different. So that means they have to be supplementary. So we plug into the supplementary equation, 125 plus x has to equal 180. We simply and easily solve for x to equal to 55. And it's as easy and quick as that. Next up, triangles, the building blocks of shapes. So first, some vocabulary review. The types of triangles. We have equilateral, which has all sides are equal, marked by these blue dashes here. And also, all angles are equal, marked by the red slashes. Isosceles is similar, but only two instead of all three are equal. So we have two equal sides, two equal angles. And then scaling is just how we refer to everything else. So none of the sides are equal, none of the angles are equal. Moving on, we have a right triangle, which I'm sure you know just has one 90 degree angle. We will cover those in depth next week. And then how do we relate pairs of triangles? Well, we can either say they are congruent or similar. Congruent means everything is the same. They have the same side lengths and the same angles. Similar means just the angles are the same, not necessarily the side lengths also. Let's see how these definitions will apply to an actual SAT problem. A regular octagon has been divided into eight congruent isosceles triangles by line segments drawn from the center of the polygon to its vertices. What is the value of x? Again, we see a geometry problem where the answer or even a path to the answer is definitely not clear. So again, we want to start with our diagram, fill in whatever we can, and eventually get ourselves to the answer. What do we know about our figure? First off, we are told that all of the triangles are isosceles. This tells us that two of the side lengths will be equal, which also tells us that two of the angles will be equal, x equal to x, both of the blue ones we see there. Next, we are told that all of the triangles are congruent, meaning they are equal in side lengths, so we mark that in all these red dashes, and also they are equal in angles. So all of these angles are all, in blue, x. Okay, great, we filled it in more, but we don't have anything any closer to a solution for x. But what else can we figure out? Well, if we look in the center, we have that, we have this circle of angles. Because it's a circle, it has to sum to 360 degrees. So we can make this new variable y for the interior angles and say that 8y, the number of angles in the middle, has to add up to 360. This allows us to solve for that angle y. Okay, again, we filled in more of our diagram, but we seem no closer to an answer, yet we are. Let's make one more leap and identify one of these triangles and use the fact that the angles inside of a triangle need to add to 180 degrees. 
Using that fact allows us to construct this equation, x plus x plus y, the angles inside of that triangle, equal 180. Now y, we just found, and x we're looking for. So we have an equation that we can solve for x. Doing so quickly, we get to our final answer, x equals 67.5. Moving on, we'll need to learn some things about similar triangles, which we will do with our last example that we see here. Again, we have some big messy diagram, and we're asked for just one number in it, a side length. Again, we have to start by filling in whatever we know, even if it doesn't seem like it's going to get us to an answer. So to start, can we identify any similar triangles in our diagram that we can use to then relate side lengths? Right off the bat, we know that the two angles at B have to be equal. So they are opposite each other, or like we said before, they are same, therefore equal. Likewise, we can relate C and E using the magic of transverse lines, same or different, by uh, extending these lines to identify them as same. So we can say that C equals E as well. And we can use similar reasoning to show that A and D are equal. So we have all of these equal angles, which tells us that we have a pair of similar triangles. So pulling out our similar triangles and copying over the side lengths, we see what we have here. And we can use this these similar triangles to set up a proportion including x, because we know that similar triangles have proportional side lengths. This gives us the equation we have here, 10 over 5 equals 8 over x, which we can easily solve for x equals 4. Now that we have that unknown side length, we can plug in to our full diagram and see that what we're looking for is the full length CE, which is just the sum of the first part, 4, which is found, and the other part we were given, 8. So our final answer then is 12. And with that, we're done. To review, you can use the magic of transverse lines to turn same or different angles into equal or supplementary. For triangles, see if you can relate things using the many facts you know, primarily congruent or similar. And most importantly, when you see these complicated geometry problems, just get comfortable walking in the dark, filling in whatever you know until eventually the answer pops out. Hope you liked the video. If you want to hear more and see what else we're up to, hit like and subscribe and see a new video coming out from Point Avenue every week. If you want to talk to us, hear more about what we're doing, or have any questions, email us at contact at pointavenue.com. Bye!